want to record a video about um, geometric sums and series. Series you often use in a, a rather special case. It really just means um, a summation, but we're going to see that there's a particular case that's very interesting where we use that. Um, let's pick up where we where we dropped off in both sections, more or less. We had discovered things like um, interesting stuff like two thirds plus two ninths plus two twenty sevenths plus dot dot dot. And if we go up to two over three to the n, then we discovered that it was one minus one over three to the n. That we've got a shortcut formula. Uh, for this huge sum. This might be a, a thousand terms added up, and we've got a shortcut formula. And the other thing is, it's getting very, very close to 1. When n is really big, this gets closer and closer to 1, and it ne but it never ever gets b above 1. And so that's going to be very interesting for us. So the first thing uh, that might be a little bit of review for one of the sections is, let's let look at a general formula. Let's suppose it starts with some term a. So here, a is going to be 2 thirds. And then the pattern of a geometric, whoops, just kidding. The pattern of a geometric sequence is that each of the terms is just r times the previous one, where r is some fixed number. And then let's take it up to, and now I'm going to use, follow the book's lead. And one of the things that we noticed was that when we did these little experiments, this end matches this end, but uh, there were other times when they don't match very well. And it turns out to be better, um, for some reason, for some purposes anyway, to go up only to n minus 1. And so that's going to be a little tricky to keep track of. Um, but we're going to call the, the highest power of r that we get in here n minus 1, not n. What that does mean is that there's actually n terms in here, because we're counting powers from r to the 0, which is the 1 that we didn't need to write here to n minus 1. So there are n terms, the sum of the first n terms of this geometric progression. Um, let's call that s. We don't know what that is yet. But we're going to use a trick that's a little, little bit like one of the versions for the arithmetic sequence, which is we're going to just rewrite that and take advantage of the pattern and just modify it slightly. The idea is that, um, and we saw this a little bit in both sections, is that if we start playing with different versions of this, we looked at things that looked sort of like this, but not quite. And they, you can think of those, di you could think of the, those different versions as either being add something to this sequence or multiply everything by the magic number r. And so let's see what happens if I multiply everything by the magic number r. And we're going to discover that we can also think of it as just adding in and subtracting some simple stuff. So that's going to take everything on the left hand and multiply it by r. And what that does is it just moves the power up by 1. But that doesn't create hardly anything really new. Um, and let me actually put in one extra term. Let's see, I think I actually did this on a previous video, but that's OK. We can review it again. Um, that creates, the only things that are new here are the ar to the n in the bottom here and the a on the top. And so that suggests we should subtract these things. Yeah, I think I did do this. So that's a minus ar to the n on the left-hand side equals s times the quantity 1 minus r. And so we get a formula for the sum. Beautiful, super important thing. The a comes out as a common factor, 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Okay, so that means that we have to do very little arithmetic to actually collapse this huge sum. And no matter how many terms there are, we just have to take r to the power. Notice that's the power that doesn't appear in the sum itself. It's the next one, and we saw that pattern coming up a couple times. 1 minus that divided by the magic 1 minus r, that's interesting, and then all times that first quantity. We saw that a little bit as well in our investigations that... Um, that uh, when we change this over by an overall factor, it just multiplies it by some factor. Okay, so what I want to do from there is a couple of things. One is what happens with money. And one of the sections we did this, but not in the other one. 
Um, if I invest $1,000 each year for 45 years at 6% interest, then how much money are we going to have? Well, there's two ways to do it. Let me do them, try and do them quickly. Um, one way is that uh, in year one, I'm going to have uh, just a thousand dollars. And let's say that they haven't paid me interest on that until I get to year two. Now in year two, that one thousand dollars gets multiplied by 1.06, because that's how they give me interest. Remember, it's, you want to think of it as a multiplication, not so much as an addition, because they leave the 1 is to leave the money in my account, the 0.06 is to give me the interest. And then, after they give me the interest, I put in another $1,000. Okay, year 3, that whole thing, I'm going to pick up that whole thing with a control C, that everything in there is going to be multiplied by 1.06, and then I'm going to add $1,000. And there's a reason that I'm not multiplying anything out here. I want to see the pattern. Okay, year four, I'm going to take that whole thing, and I'm going to multiply it by, <laughs> no integrals, sorry, not calculus yet, and multiply that by 1.06 and add 1,000. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's see what that is equal to. We're getting a thousand. I'm going to drop the dollar signs. If it's a thousand, then that's multiplied by 1.06 three times. So that's 1.06 cubed plus a thousand times. Now this one gets multiplied by both of these 1.06s. Hmm, that's 1.06 squared plus a thousand times 1.06 plus a thousand. Hey, that's if I read it backwards, that's exactly just this pattern of a geometric series. It's A is 1,000 and R is 1.06. And I've got four terms, so the N to match up with their formula would be 4. And that's exactly how many years. Oh, that's cool. So we can see, we can guess what the pattern is going to be. In year 45, we're going to get 1,000. I'm going to take that out as a common factor. Times 1, that's... The, the one that wouldn't get multiplied by 1.06, plus 1.06, plus 1.06 squared, plus 1.06 cubed, plus, and it's going to be a big sum, because I've done this process 45 times, but the last one is only to the 44th, and that makes sense. That actually uh, fits in with this whole n minus 1 business. Okay, so if we hadn't done the general geometric series thing, we'd say, oh, what a pain. We have to calculate all that. Well, that's what the Excel spreadsheet was doing for us, but now we know a much easier way to calculate it. And so we're going to get 1 minus 1.06 to the 45 over 1 minus 1.06. That's not that hard to plug in into a calculator or a computer, and let's get the magic number, and we'll see if it looks about like what we had before. Okay, and that's in scientific notation, but let's just put it up there. It's about $212,740, and it's an approximation because it only went to five sig, sig figs. Wow, okay, and that is in fact what we were seeing uh, toward the end of the process. Um, at the, on the Excel spreadsheet, about $200,000. And remember, that's a lot more than $45,000. You put in $45,000 uh, in terms of how much you sank into this thing, but you're getting, it's growing to over $200,000. It's a pretty good deal. Okay, so this idea of going from this, what turns out to be a geometric sum, to the shortcut formula for a geometric sum is going to make these kinds of calculations much easier. We can just plug it in to this kind of master formula. Okay, let me just mention something that I mentioned with one of the sections, which is um, an alternate explanation. Instead of um, just focusing on one lump sum of money and sort of see, seeing how this pattern works, because I think you have to have a little bit of faith in the pattern here maybe, um, and that's the idea to put the money into 40, uh, 45 separate accounts. That doesn't really change anything. At the end, we can always add up the accounts. Um, 
but I think it, it clarifies things a little bit. So in year one, I have just one account with one thousand dollars. In year two, I have an account with that account with the one thousand dollars has now gotten some interest. I'll put it in math mode. That's in one account in the first account I opened, and then a new account with just a thousand dollars. In year three, that first account I had, that has now earned interest twice, and so it's gotten up to this much money with a square. That, w that what account that was new before it has now earned interest once, and then I've got a new account with a thousand dollars. Same deal in year four, but now well, I've got, let's see, that first account turned into, oh, it's earned interest again, so it's got to a cube. The second account I opened has now earned interest twice. The one that was new before has now earned interest, and now I've got another new account. In every year, I've got one account with just a thousand because I just opened it. That's the amount of, or equivalently, it's the money I put into the big account that just hasn't earned any, earned any interest yet. The money from one year ago has earned one year of interest. The money from two years ago has earned two years of interest. The money from three years ago has earned three years of interest. So, in year 45, that very first account has earned interest 44 times. Um, and there's the money in the second account I opened has earned it 43 times down to um, there was money, oops, not 1900 there's money I put in just last year that's earned interest once and then the last little bit I put in hasn't yet earned any interest if you add all those up it's the same amount as what we had before okay so that is um, how this is going to apply to money. We probably won't have time since of our unfortunate break uh, to talk about things like loans and um, other kinds of annuity things where things get paid off continuously, but it's really the same kind of idea. Um, so we'll do a little bit with that, but then let me just, uh, uh, well that's a good place to stop this video, and then in the next video I'll talk about what happens when we take all this off to infinity, because that is super cool.